Hi, welcome to the channel, I'm Laura Miller and I make videos about programming. Today we'll talk about the async await syntax in JavaScript, which works with promises behind the scenes, but it makes our code look synchronous. So as you can imagine, there is quite a bit of confusion, especially for those who are starting with JavaScript, how we can properly use the async await syntax. And that's the goal of this video, to try to clarify this whole topic. So if you didn't watch the previous video about promises, make sure to check that one before you watch this one, otherwise you'll get quite confused. That being said, let's check the agenda for today and let's get started. There is not really much for us to talk about async await because this is really just another syntax for handling promises. So we'll talk about the syntax, of course, and then some specifics of behavior. And if you need a refresher on promises, then I'll make sure to put the link up here so that you can check the video where I discuss promises in much more details, right? So with that said, let's get starting with exploring the async await syntax. I'll create a new file here in the IDE and we will start, so here I'm gonna say syntax.js. And we will start by declaring a simple, as we did before, a simple subtract async function, okay? So this subtract async is gonna receive two parameters, A and B, and it's gonna, re uh, it's gonna return a new promise. And this new promise is gonna have an executor with a resolve. And we actually can have here, we can put a resolve and reject for the future. So resolve reject and then here if, and then we will take the type of operator. So similar to what we did in the past, if type of A is different than number or, or type of B is different than number, then we will reject with a new error. And this new error is gonna say, please provide valid inputs, valid inputs, right? And if that's not the case, then we'll just resolve with a minus B. So now if I were to use traditional promises here, all I would have to do is to simply say subtract async, for example, one and two, and then chain a couple of then and catch methods. So if, so the, the then here is gonna receive the value. And once I get the value, then I can, for example, subtract async again, and I will subtract from that value, let's say five, and then here, Afterwards, I'm going to console.log the result, right? So console.log the value in the end. And here, of course, I will add a catch because we have the possibility of, a, of having errors here. And if I have an error, I'll simply console.log the error.message, okay? So this is a traditional way of using promises for handling asynchronous code. We will simply chain a couple of then methods here. Remember we discussed that because the then method returns a promise and if the return value of the then method is a promise itself, then it does not wrap anything. It just returns the new promise. Then we can chain, we, we can chain a couple of then methods and make the structure very flat and very easy to understand. So if I were to save this code and run here in the console with node syntax.js, then you will see that we will print at some point minus six on the screen, exactly. Now let's see how we can transform this into the async await syntax. As I said, the async await syntax is just a different way of working with promises. So here, um, the top level async is implemented in more recent versions of Node, but for the sake of compatibility, if we want to use the async await syntax, we should declare a function and then call this function from the from, from our original script, okay? So you could try to use await, for example, directly at the top level here, for example, subtract async, like so, and this will work in more recent versions of Node. I'm not sure exactly what version, but um, for older versions, this is going to throw an error, okay? So for the sake of compat compatibility here, let's declare a new function and we will say simply subtract async await, okay? And here you see that I'm using the async both here and here. And to be honest, um, I tend to use while I'm coding the async as an abbreviation for asynchronous, okay? Um, but this can be a little bit confusing with the async await syntax. So maybe here I could write asynchronous directly and then here we'll have subtract asynchronous and subtract asynchronous. Now, 
you will find many times that the async is used as an abbreviation here. Don't confuse the abbreviation with the actual meaning of async. Okay, so here we will say async and then we can actually execute or we can use the await from within this function. So what the await does is actually quite nice because um, let's try to retrieve the value here with from the subtract asynchronous. Now, if I simply add this await keyword here, then this is going to pause the execution of the code and it's going to wait until this promise is resolved. And if this promise or when this promise is resolved, then value is going to contain the resolved or the fulfilled value of this promise. Let's for the sake of demonstration, just console.log value here. And now let's call the subtract async await. All right, so here, my IDE is complaining that I have no then method. I don't need a then method, but here I'll just say console.log finished the async await function. Okay, so or finished is not really the, the right way. So resolved is better. Let's save this. And for the sake of here, let me just comment this out because I just want to have one output on the screen. Once I save this and I run in the console, then you will see that it prints minus one and then it says resolved the async await function. So the async keyword, it transforms this function into a promise. Okay, so it, it wraps this whole function. I don't know if it's exactly wrapping a function around a promise, but the idea behind the scenes is that the async keyword is going to transform this function into a promise, which means that we can do what we are doing here at the bottom by chaining the dot then and also the dot catch method. So in the end, subtract async await is a promise. Okay. This await keyword here is going to pause the execution, as I said, of the code until the promise returned by subtract asynchronous results. This can take a while. This can take maybe a couple of seconds, but this can be almost immediate as it is in this code. Once this promise is resolved, then the value is going to be returned by the await keyword or by the await operator. And then we can work with this value. Okay, that's it for the basics of the async await syntax. And as you can see, it really makes the code look very synchronous, right? Um, this can be misleading sometimes because the async await is actually promises and asynchronous execution behind the scenes, which can make things quite confusing if you're not familiar with asynchronous programming in JavaScript. In any case, just keep that in mind because just adding these two little keywords here does not make your code synchronous. Even though the code looks synchronous, it is not synchronous, okay? You can see here at the top what is the actual equivalent. If I were to simply remove this line, then this would be the equivalent here. Now let's talk a little bit more here on the second about the behavior of async functions. Because one thing that I didn't mention here is what happens if subtract asynchronous throws an error. So with the await or with the async await syntax, we normally wrap things up around a try catch block, right? So here we could simply say try let await subtract asynchronous console.log and then here we will catch the error. And if there is an error, we will console.log the error here for the sake of um, being the same, let's say error.message. Now this code is exactly equivalent to, whoops, let me just remove this line here. This code is exactly the same or it, it is equivalent in terms of behavior to this code on the top. So the idea here of this um, traditional use of promises is that you execute the subtract asynchronous, you then have a, a function or a callback that is ex executed once the promise is fulfilled. And you have a callback which is executed if there is any error thrown from the promise or if the promise is rejected. Here is pretty much the same. You have a try block which is going to be executed with the code. And if this function, if this promise here throws any errors or if for any reason the promise is rejected, then the await operator is going to throw this error for us. Let's give it a try and let's try to actually execute with a string of one. So we should see on the screen 
please provide valid inputs. I'm saving this and now back here in the console, let's run a node syntax.js. And as you can see, that's exactly what happens. Pr please provide valid inputs. So back here at the IDE, you see that we do not have any dot catch callback chained to this asynchronous function. This is handled by the await operator and if this asynchronous function rejects for any reason by either throwing an error or by by simply calling the reject from the executor here then the await is going to throw and we can catch this error here now if we were to simply throw a new error here you will see that the behavior is the same throw new error once i save this and execute the code then we have the exact same behavior. One little thing I would like to mention is that if we do not have this try catch structure around this, then we're gonna have a little problem. Let's see what happens here. Once I run this, you see that we have that nasty error of unhandled promise rejection warning. And what's happening here is that because the await is throwing an error from within this, this uh, let's say, quote unquote, hidden promise here by the async, then we should actually catch the error here, right? So we should catch the error at the bottom here, and then we would have an error and we'll console.log the error.message. Now that's because the error that is coming from the subtract asynchronous is being thrown again by the await operator. And then this whole promise here, the subtract async await is being rejected, but I have no dot catch callback here at the bottom. So now let's save this and once I execute, now we have a much nicer output, right? So let's now come back here to, to the older version when we have the try catch block. And another interesting thing that I want to show to you is that once I run a node syntax.js again, then you see that there are two different outputs. The first one, the one when we had the dot catch here at the topmost level, was without this line at the bottom, without this resolve the async await function line at the bottom. And why is it so? Well, as it turns out, we are doing a little bit of error handling from within this promise, from within the catch block. Okay, so the catch block is going to do the error handling for us, but the promise is going to be resolved normally. So we will enter the dot then here. Another thing that I could do is to simply here again, throw a new error with the error here, or actually throw the error again, All right? So this is fine if I do it like so, but maybe new error here will be a bit easier to understand what we are doing. And then you see that we'll get the error again about the unhandled promise syntax. And then we need to add the dot then block here dot not dot then, sorry, dot catch with the error. And then we say console.log error.message. Once I save this and I run the code, then you see that we have error. Please provide valid inputs. Let me clear the whole thing here. So the whole or the main idea of, of using the try catch block is that we are doing some error handling from within the async await function. And in the end, this function is actually resolving it. It's not rejecting. So it's being resolved. And that's why the dot then is being executed here. Let's save this. And just for the sake of completing the discussion, you see that here it appears again on the screen. Now, just a brief, why did I use let here? Perhaps this will be a little bit more interesting is that I just want to show you how we can use multiple awaits within the function. So remember that we had this function here before subtract asynchronous then with the value and five. Right, so in the end we were getting minus six here. And now here I can actually use this value which is returned from the promise and I can await again the subtract asynchronous with the value here, with the value here. And now let's go back to the correct output. Once I save this, now you should be able to see minus six on the screen and then resolved the async await function. So let's run the code. Oops, not minus six, minus three. Sorry, I copied here. I should change to five. There you have your minus six and then resolved the async await function. So this is, I think these are the main points of working with async await. If you do some error handling locally here, then the overall promise, the promise that is created by using the async keyword here, it is going to be resolved, except if you throw something from within the catch block, okay? 
if you do not use the try catch block then whatever promise here if there is any promise from within the code that gets rejected this error is going to cause this outer promise to be rejected and then you need to have the error handling at the upper level. That's it for today and hopefully by now the async await syntax is much clearer. As you will see when we move forward with more applied knowledge we will make heavy use of async await so it's important we understand how it actually works. So in the next and probably last video of this introduction series to JavaScript we will talk about how we can split our programs into multiple files and the JavaScript module system. If you don't want to miss that make sure to subscribe to the channel and you'll get a notification when the video is out. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.